In this video, we're going to take a look at choosing an appropriate factoring method for a polynomial and also using combinations of factoring methods so that we can completely factor any given polynomial. So let's take a look at this first one. And before we even we go there, I'd like to just review quickly the factoring methods that we have um, available to us. The first one is factoring by GCF, and that's what we should look for first. Is there anything that I can pull out of the entire polynomial to make it simpler? Um, that's where we should start. Then we can use our methods to factor uh, trinomials, if it's a trinomial, um, remembering uh, how we factor those things. Or if it's a binomial, perhaps uh, difference of squares, difference of squares would be an option that we could have. Um, or remember also with trinomials, we could look for those perfect square trinomials, which will also help us to factor. So he, let's take a look at this first example here, where we have uh, 4x squared minus 40. And the first thing I want to do again is look to see if there's a greatest common factor between all of the terms that I could pull out. And in this case, it appears there is. 4, I could divide this by 4. I could also divide this by 4. So let's do that. I'm going to pull a 4 out front here. And then if I divide 4x squared by 4, that leaves me with x squared. Then negative 40 divided by 4 is going to be negative 10. Now, look at what you have left and see if we can't apply another factoring method to this. In this one, I have a two terms, that would be a binomial, so it could be a difference of squares. Let's see if it is. x squared is a perfect square, but 10 is not. So I'm done. There's no further factoring I can do in this particular problem. Let's take a look at this next one here on the bottom. 2x squared plus 8x plus 6. Again, the first thing we want to do is look for that greatest common factor. Is there anything I can pull out of all of those pieces? In this case, there is a 2. And remember, a, a quick way that we can look to see if there's something they have in common, look at the smallest numbered term and see if that goes, if we can pull that out of each of the other pieces. Like I looked at the 2 here and I see, oh, this is even, this is even. So I can take a 2 out of all those terms. So I'm going to do that. So I have 2 times x squared. I'm going to take 8x and divide it by 2. That would be 4x. I'm going to take 6 and divide it by 2, that would be 3. Now, I have a trinomial there. So then I use my trinomial factoring skills. And look, is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, no, because 3 is not a perfect square. But can I factor that thing? Well, I'm looking for factors of 3 that add up to 4. Well, 3 and 1. OK, perfect. So one thing to remember is this 2 that we pulled out, we've got to keep that coming along here. And this trinomial is going to break up into two things. And the signs, well, this is a plus, that's a plus. They're both going to be plus. First term, well, how do we get that x squared? x times x. Then we said factors of 3 that add up to 4 would be 3 and 1, just like so. Then I look at these pieces. Is there any more factoring I can do? In this case, there's not. I have two binomials. There's no difference. It's not a difference of squares, so I'm done. Let's take a look at this next one up here. In this one, what do we have in common? Well, it looks like we've got a 7 in common because I've got uh, 7 would go into 21 and 28, and I've got that negative there. So I'm going to pull that out with it. So we're going to take a negative 7 out front, then Divide this thing by negative 7 leaves me with x squared. Negative 21x divided by negative 7 is plus 3x. And then um, 28 divided by negative 7 will be minus 4. OK. Now, I have a trinomial in here. Can I factor that further? Let's see. I'm looking for factors of 4 that are going to have a difference of 3. Factors of 4 with a difference of 3. Are there any? Well, 4 times 1. Perfect. OK, so we're going to have two terms here. Because this is minus, we know the signs will be plus and minus. First term is going to be x, because that's how we get our x squared. Then 
factors of 4 that have a difference of 3 and I want to end up with a plus 3 so I need to put my larger factor with the positive here so that will be 4 and 1 and remember we can always foil this back out and make sure that we get back to here what we started with then I look at this anything further that I can do with those nope we've got two binomials uh, the difference is not a difference of squares so we're done alright let's take a look at this next one on the bottom there we've got 3x squared minus 300 first thing we want to do is look for that GCF something I can pull out of both well 3 does go into 300 so I'm gonna take a 3 out of both those terms so 3x squared divided by 3 would be x squared then negative 300 divided by 3 would be minus 100 okay now we've got a, bi a binomial remaining inside the parentheses here is that a difference of squares let's check x squared that's a perfect square 100 that's a perfect square so this is a difference of squares so I can continue to factor that remember a difference of squares will break up into two things signs are plus and minus this piece would be x times x to get x squared what gets us 100 well that would be 10 times 10 just like so and remember if we foiled this out those middle terms there be a 10x and a minus 10x those cancel and that's why we're left with just that binomial can I factor either of these further no we do have a difference but it's not a difference of squares so I've done alright then in this uh, next row over here we've got 10w to the sixth minus 16w squared again looking for what they have in common first of all a GCF let's see 10 can I take 10 out of 160 sure enough so I'm gonna take a 10 out for sure what about the variable piece well there's six W's being multiplied here there's two W's being multiplied there there's two that I can take out so 10 W squared then let's take a 10 W squared out of this and we're left with W to the fourth minus let's see 160 W squared that would be take divide out the 10 W squared give us minus 16 okay so we have w to the fourth minus sixteen it's a binomial is it a difference of squares yes w to the fourth is a perfect square and that minus sixteen is a perfect square so again i can break that up so bring along what we have on the outside there so we have ten w squared this difference of squares will break up into two things plus and minus first term what squared gets us w to the fourth well that would be w squared so we have w squared there w squared there what squared gets us 16 well that would be 4 times 4 now I look again is there anything here that I can factor further well this is both squares perfect squares but it's not a difference so I can't do anything more with that but here I have another difference of squares so I can break that up even further so I'm gonna slide this 10 W squared way over here this first binomial I'm just gonna bring that along there's nothing more I can do with that then this is the difference of squares so that's gonna break up again into plus and minus the signs what squared gets us W squared well that would be W times W what squared gets us 4 2 times 2 so there we are then anything further I can do with that no so I have to stop at that point there's no further factoring but notice how many times that one broke up we have to keep looking back and making sure that we've got everything broken up as much as possible so keep be on the lookout for that okay this last one here what do they have in common that I can pull out well in terms of the numbers we've got a minus three here I could take a minus three out of all of them what about the variables what variables do they all have there's a B on all of them so I'm gonna take a minus three B out of each of the terms here so minus three B if I take this and divide out a minus three B I'm left with a squared 12 a B divided by negative 3b would be negative 4a okay and if you don't believe me 
multiply those back together and sure enough we get back there then 12 negative 12 B divided by negative 3 B would be plus 4 okay now we've got a trinomial can I factor that trinomial well factors of 4 that add up to 4 sure 2 times 2 so again don't forget to bring along this term that you factored out that's still there this is gonna break up into two things and this is plus so both signs will be this minus and minus first term a squared well that would be a and a then the second thing factors of four that add up to four would be minus two and minus two so we've got that then I can rewrite that notice here we didn't recognize it but we can still say that we have it now we have a perfect square trinomial notice how we ended up with the a minus two times the a minus two so I could rewrite that as negative b times a minus two a minus two not a crazy line a minus two squared like so okay so choosing and combining factoring methods uh, the key first thing is that we look to see if there's something we can pull out of the entire thing first so look for that GCF then if you end up with a binomial meaning two terms look for a difference of squares uh, which we can break up some more or if we end up with a trinomial remember we can break those up as well uh, using the rules that we have for working with trinomials and as we saw here sometimes we could break it up and then we'd have to break it up some more so be on the lookout for that make sure you don't stop until there is no more factoring that can be done with any of the pieces that remain hope this video was helpful and if you keep working hard on your math I know you'll do great so keep it up